first process of whittling down this massive assembly cut is to find all of the repeated instances of the same idea. Once you do that, you can decide which one works better and delete the one that doesn't work. Going through that whole process, we get to our assembly cut, which is the second pass. Once we've cut out all the chaff, everything that we don't need, and we end up with something more reasonably at two hours and 15 minutes. And what you're doing in this section is you're finding all your conceptually discrete sections are getting a little bit smaller. Once that's happening, you can start to rearrange it. The problem is once you move anything out of another section, that previous section no longer works and you end up with a kind of a Rubik's cube effect where you're constantly moving things around, trying to get it to work properly. And you start playing through them, seeing how planning. the actual language flows from one clip to the next. A lot of the central planning is perfectly legal. You may remember that under the apartheid system, we had all these... I should stress that at this point, we're not thinking about how to put the clips in an order that is compelling and works well in an aesthetic sense we're thinking purely about structure it's very important to think about the structure first and then move on to the finer details in fact you'll see that through my first cut my second cut and all the way up to the sixth cut i don't use any overlays visuals or anything like that the reason for that is that there is so much moving around of certain interviews to other areas and generally rearranging things that to add in visuals too early can make it a lot harder in the long run. This is also the, the section where we'll review a lot with our directors and it's difficult to offer feedback when you're not looking at the final product. And of course the biggest criticism was that it was incredibly boring to watch without any visuals, but you just have to ask people to be patient because adding visuals too early is just going to make the Rubik's Cube effect a lot more intense. So after some time when we've got the general arrangement of the film in a way that we like, once we're more or less happy with where everything is, we can start thinking about how to make the rhythm work better, how to work with the visuals. So what's great about multi-clips is that when you have a multi-clip you can change between the camera angles even after you've edited it into the sequence so for example here with Paul Hoffman we can play a little bit of it and decide okay at this point I want to switch to a close-up so I can pause it I have N on my keyboard map to create an edit and then simply press up or down on the keyboard to change to a different angle Okay, that's not a great place to change to the close-up, but we can change to a close-up at a better point. Normally when they're saying something with a little more emotive value or something that's delivered in a strong way, you want to cut to a close-up just like you would in a regular narrative film. So that already helps to make the whole thing a lot more watchable. The other thing that's useful about cutting between the wide shots and the close-ups in the multi-camera edit is you may decide to delete a certain section of the dialogue. And this is made a lot easier if you can cut to a close-up. You see, you're less likely to notice the edit if you're changing the angle. So that's an example where you don't necessarily have to go to a cutaway or something like that. You can just change the angle and cut out everything in between. Once you've done this, you still may find certain instances where you don't really have another angle. Like in this, we weren't able to get two cameras, so we had to shoot this interview from only one angle. Now this becomes a challenge if you don't have a wide angle to cut to and you want to cut out a lot of the dialogue in between and cut straight to something else. Or he might be saying um and er uh, and all the other filler words. So a neat trick in Avid you can use, I'll just play this, you can see there's a cut there, Business, but, also you were but it's not too noticeable, it look better when I render it. But what this is, is the fluid morph effect. And the fluid morph effect is great, not always usable, but if there's very, very little difference in a jump cut, you can add that on to smooth it out. Your business, but also you were in a position to there we go, um, barely noticeable at all. And you can go onto YouTube to find a more detailed explanation on 
how to use this effect. So, once we're ready to start working with visuals, best thing is to take all of that footage that we had, uh, organize them into bins. I've arranged them according to the type of footage that we, that we have. So we have footage to represent the bread companies, the courts, the food industry itself, etc. And pigeons was quite an important one. At some point we decided pigeons would be a great metaphor to use over and over in the film. So I've collected all of the footage we have of pigeons and then of course the best ones are in green. And we can use that at the appropriate point. So after that I'll move on to the sixth cut where I started to add over the visuals. Then this of course helps you to tell the story in a more interesting way by using visuals and not just rely on talking heads for the entire film. Another thing I'd like to point out is that of course you can't have people talking just for an hour straight as it'll drive you mad so it's very important to have breaks where we use titles and also to have some moments where we don't have speaking and we just let the visuals tell the story for us. So we have some sections like this where we simply will play music, montage, and then we'll slowly go into the interviews again. Moments of rest are very important to let your audience think about the ideas being represented and have some time to internalize it. Otherwise you just get this one hour rant. Of course we also have our obligatory opening montage to introduce the visual ideas of the story. Once we're happy with the film, I'll go to the eighth cut. We're ready to do some sound design and some grading. You could of course grade it within Avid. They have great color correction tools, but I quite like to use DaVinci Resolve and for sound design Pro Tools. So for both DaVinci and Resolve, all you need to do is export an AAF exactly like you did for Pluralize. And then that AAF will link up to the audio for Pro Tools and the video for DaVinci Resolve. So keep in mind that the process of creating the transcripts, having them marked up, creating the master paper edit, and of course creating your group clips, all of that. I went through it in a fairly straightforward step-by-step -step process, but of course this is an iterative process and it will be running in parallel over the months and weeks that you'll be using to work on the production. So it can get quite complicated and you can get quite bogged down in the technical side, but if you organize it correctly if you plan it correctly from the beginning you shouldn't have too hard a time the hardest part of course is writing the story which is what you're doing when you're constructing that i've left links in the low bar to tim's bulletproof multi-group article so please check that out also a great video on how to do the fluid morph effect also check out the crumbs trailer and the crumbs facebook page we're going to be screening at a few festivals so if you're interested in watching the film, please check that out. And also, after itself, link to their website. And special thanks to my directors, Richard Gregory and Dante Hrief, and cinematographer Nicola Geldnes, my producers Maritz Schoenling, Siska Meyer, Tristram Atkins, our sound designer Werner Kuhn, and Nicola Geldnes. And extra special thanks to our very talented composer Tapiwa Musvavsvi and also to lecturers at AFTA, especially Steve Drake and Garth Holmes for all their valuable feedback. So I hope that you've been able to pick up a few tricks and approaches and good luck and thanks for watching.